Today, I'm starting on a journey of painting up all 20 Space Marine Legions. Today, I'll be painting the first half of the Loyalist Legions for Warhammer the Horus Heresy with an emphasis on freehand, small conversions, and trying to get the character of each Legion to show on a single Mark VI Marine. Now, I would have gone with different armor marks, but unfortunately, Mark VI was the only one I could find in stock anywhere near me. What do you think is the most iconic Space Marine armor mark? Iron Within, Iron Without Mark III, or Beakies for Life Mark VI? Let me know in the comments down below, and let's jump right into it. The bulwark of the Imperium and the Emperor's truest and first sons, we're going to begin with the first legion, the Dark Angels. The colors I was hoping to emulate here were those of Knight Sergeant Idravain Moors. For the conversion elements of this marine, I wanted to invoke the weapons of Old Knight, as many of the Dark Angels wield weapons from the Dark Age of Technology and have an abundance of plasma weapons. For this, I gave him a strange plasma-based weapon from the Vaults of Terror, which is actually an Assault Intercessor Sergeant's plasma pistol, which has been converted to be held in two hands. For this paint job, I started from a black primer. I highlighted this up using a mix of black and Vallejo medium gunship grey, and then an edge highlight of pure Vallejo gunship grey. With the main armour done, let's look at the range of different symbols and colours associated with the armour of the Dark Angels. I'm starting with Wraithbone for the white areas. Each of these bone white armour plates indicates a mortal wound that the bearer has sustained that was intended for another. This means poor old Idravain has been in the wars as I count no fewer than four different bone white panels. I pinwashed the Wraithbone using Seraphim Sepia, which really brings out that ivory tone in the white. I was careful not to get any of this on the armour in order to avoid staining. I then came in with Wraithbone mixed with pure white to highlight up the brightest edges, like on the helmet for example. I painted the relevant metallics with Vallejo gunmetal, which I washed down with a black wash before highlighting back up with Vallejo steel. That just left some trim and details. I started with his eyes, which I painted with gunmetal, followed by chrome, and then a layer of signal red metallic paint. I then moved on to his left hand, which has a red and white checkerboard pattern. I started with a base coat of Wraithbone, which I then came in with lines of Mephiston red in order to mark out where I wanted the checkerboard pattern. I then filled in each other square to give the final checkerboard effect. I was able to neaten up with a little bit more Wraithbone on any of the rougher edges. I next painted the knee pad with the heraldic yellow and blue diagonal. I started from a base coat of Wraithbone, onto which I layered the blue as McCrag blue and yellow ochre for the yellow section. Onto this I did a little bit of freehand with the sort of L marking that he has on that leg. I wasn't able to get it exactly like it is in the book, but it should give you the indication. Next, to finish this guy off, it was on to transfers. Now the Dark Angels chapter symbol is a little different in 40k to what you see in 30k. So what I did is I actually took the chapter symbol, applied it to his shoulder pad, and used this as a template from which to sketch out my 30k era Dark Angels chapter symbol. I used a dark red followed by Mephiston red and then Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight up all the feathers, and a mix of greys in order to get the sword detail in the center. I also painted up the plasma gun using white and then a layer of moot green thinned down to flow into the recesses. And with that, here is Knight Sergeant Idravain Moors, ready to hopefully dodge bullets a little bit better in the name of the Lion and Caliban. Like an approaching Kizagan assault speeder, let's quickly move on to the White Scars. I'll be trying to emulate legionary Yeek Nidun from the Brotherhood of the Golden Star. For conversions here, I used a scout arm with a bolt pistol, and then also a spare arm that I had lying around with a combat knife. I also added a little rope of Chigorian horsehair onto one of his shoulder pads. Finally, I added an extra pistol and some additional packs to indicate that this guy is quite prepared to survive by himself and range ahead of the rest of his legion in the fights of the Horus Heresy. The armor of the White Scars is a cool white, which can be difficult to reproduce, so I decided to start with this tricky step. I base coated the model white and then painted over all of the armor using Celestra Grey. This is a light bluish grey colour which should work as a good base coat for me to work up from. One of the issues you run into with white is that if you start with pure white you have nowhere to go with your highlights. When it came to highlighting my armour, I started with a mix of Celestra grey and pure white, which I then gradually added more and more white to as I got to the additional layers. Pure white was only used for edge highlights and this should really help to indicate that it's a reflective white surface. 
Next, I used a pin wash of thinned down Abaddon Black. I do prefer using thinned down black paint for this rather than non-oil, just because it tends to give a deeper recess shade uh, and also tends to flow a bit more smoothly into the recesses without staining. Everyone's favorite Mongolian horse archers from space have a variety of interesting heraldry from their time as the pioneer fleets at the head of the Emperor's Great Crusade. And for Yeek, this takes the form of many red details all across the white armor. I started with the jagged red pattern on his leg. For this, I started by drawing tiny dots of Mephiston red where I wanted the tops of those points to be. I then linked these up using lines of Mephiston red before then filling in the area underneath. Using the dots helps to keep the effect more uniform and I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. I also used a thin brush with thin down Mephiston red to add some Chagorian detailing to his shoulder pad. The leather details were coated with Vallejo Dark Flesh, which was then washed down with a black wash. The gold elements were painted first with Retributor Armor, but upon reviewing the image, I realized that I needed a bit of a cooler gold, so I switched over to Bright Brass from Vallejo. Silver elements were painted with my favorite Vallejo gunmetal, shaded down with a black wash, and then highlighted up using Vallejo Aluminium. The ruby gems in the center of his chest and his belt buckle were painted over using Blood for the Blood God. This gives a really quick and easy shining gem effect. So just get this guy to a jet bike and he's ready for the battlefield. On to the Sixth Legion, the Space Wolves. Legionary Hruger from the Emperor's Executioners and Lone Wolves got a pretty extensive conversion in order to show that the Space Wolves are definitely apart from their brothers. The head is a spare dwarf blood bowl head with a glorious long beard, which did require significant conversion in order to get it to fit on the body. I had to snip away the majority of the front of his torso. He's also equipped with a pair of lightning claws, which is probably illegal in game, but it's only appropriate for the Vulca Fenrica. For painting, their dark grey armour is considerably different to the lighter blue grey that you see in 40k. I started from a black base coat and then wanted to get that sort of stormy grey really representing the seas and wilds of Fenris. I started with a mix of black, Vallejo medium grey and just a single dab of Macrag blue. I highlighted up using additional grey paint added into the mix before doing a final edge highlight using pure grey. The metal details were first painted with my classic gun metal washed down with black and then highlighted back up with Vallejo steel, but then I realized that in the book Legionary Hruger has a bunch of sort of brass slash dark gold elements. In order to replicate this, I added a mix of Vallejo rust and bright brass, which gave me just the right shade that I was looking for. With that done, we can now focus on the individual details of this guy, including the face and beard and those lightning claws. The face was base coated with Bugman's Glow and Dark Flesh in equal parts before shading over with Reichland Flesh Shade and highlighting up with Bugman's Glow. It's not the best face I've ever done, but it's more than good enough for tabletop standard, so let's move on to looking at the beard. The beard was base coated with Wraithbone and then shaded over with Seraphim Sepia in order to represent the blonde hair of the Sons of Lehman Russ. I added a little bit of Araman Blue to the base of the Power Claws as well as the Power Pack element on his wrist. I then applied some dark red to the sort of servo elements of the power claws and then added some temple guard blue as a final highlight on the edges of the claws. With that, our space wolf is ready to bring the emperor's enemies to bloody compliance. Next up are the imperial fists, the banana boys in yellow. This one gave me some real difficulty as I don't really have any bits that would be appropriate for the fists in my bits box. I decided to replicate a legionary Arnfried from the Liber Astartes with a Mark VI glow up and a field promotion. For conversions, I swapped the arms for the tank commander arms from the Spartan, and then I also swapped the head for a bear head, which gives the right old man energy for the Imperial Fists. I mean, seriously, have you seen the characters for the Fists? They all look like a lineup of characters most likely to offer you a Werther's original in 40k. If it sounds like I'm bitter or in any way I don't like the Imperial Fists, I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression, I think it's just because I know what's coming up in terms of the paint job. People tend to think of white and yellow as the hardest colours to paint, but I can tell you for a fact that the yellow was a hundred times harder than I found painting my white scar. I started from a base coat of 50-50 dark flesh and yellow ochre, which I then highlighted up using yellow ochre in what felt like about 50 or 60 different layers. I then added Uriel Yellow to the mix in order to get my highlights. To give the armor some definition, I panel lined using Dark Flesh thinned down to a wash consistency. 
Black metal from Vallejo was used to accent some of the metal areas, as well as gun metal for some of the more functional elements. I finished off with a bit of black for the webbing between the armour panels, and then I could move on to the details. While the armour gave me some difficulties, I was pretty happy with how the face turned out on this guy. I started from a dark flesh base coat before layering up with a 50-50 mix of dark flesh and Bugman's Glow. I then steadily added in more and more Bugman's Glow, focusing only on the most raised areas. For a final highlight, I took pure Bugman's Glow and mixed in just a brushful of Wraithbone. I then applied this to the top of his head in order to give a bit of shine, as well as to the bridge of his nose and across his eyebrows. His beard was also painted with Wraithbone and then shaded down with Seraphim Sepia. There were quite a few lenses across this model on all of his communications equipment, as I imagined he'd probably been promoted into a Master of Signals. To get the shine on the lenses, I coated them with Vallejo Chrome, before then coming in with either Waywatcher Green or Blood for the Blood God, and mixing up across the model so that I could end up with some different elements. Lastly, I added some Imperial Fists transfers to both shoulder pads, as shown in the image in the book. These are very round and refuse to sit in place without a lot of cajoling. Overall though, I'm happy with how this guy turned out, and now Legionary Arnfried is ready to stand at the last defence on the Walls of Terror. So, after pushing myself outside of my comfort zone with four different legions that I've never painted before, I was returning home to Baal for the Blood Angels. Here I was focusing on Sergeant Leon Harum, who I converted with a Blood Angel's shoulder pad, a pair of Inferno pistols, and a head from the Blade Guard Veterans kit, along with an additional halo detail pulled from another Blood Angel's helmet. I'm thinking that I might run him as a Moritat for my Legion. If you're interested in seeing how I quickly paint up Blood Angels, you can check out my first video in this Horus Heresy series, which should be linked in the top right hand corner. For this guy, I started with a 50-50 mix of Dark Flesh and Mephiston Red, with just a touch of black. I'd normally use Rhinox Hide here, which is why I added the extra black. I then did a sketchy highlight up with Mephiston Red, then a 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, and finally, a last highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. The gold details were painted with Retributor armour, including all of the blood drops, which I then shaded over using Seraphim Sepia. The silver was painted with my favourite, Gunmetal from Vallejo, and then I also added black details like the webbing in between the armour panels and the casings of the guns. For the easy blood gems, I gave these a coat of blood for the blood god, maybe representing the ill fate of the blood angels after Cygnus and the eye lenses were coated with chrome, before then being topped with waystone green. Lastly, as the Inferno pistols are basically close combat melters, I decided to give them a bit of a melter burn effect, coating over the barrels using first Seraphim Sepia, then a layer of Reichland Flesh Shade a little closer to the barrel, and a final layer of Daruki Violet right around the end. And so with that, Sergeant Leon Harum has become Moritat Leon Harum, ready to execute the Emperor's justice on the battlefields of the 31st millennium. And so we're done. A plasma-wielding grizzled veteran, a Chigorian warhawk on the hunt for prey, a son of Rus with a spectacular beard, a stalwart defender of the walls of terror, and a red angel finding glory in the deaths of his enemies. Thanks for watching this video, it's been a real pleasure to paint up a bunch of new paint schemes that I otherwise wouldn't have touched. Except for Imperial Fists, you can keep those. I did, I did like it at the end, but the, god, the, the yellow yeah, paint. Yellow paint is just not a thing. Now, I've only finished the first five Loyalist Legions. While I was making this video, the excellent Eric's Hobby Workshop has achieved all 20. So, if you haven't already, if you've somehow come to my channel before his, I'd highly recommend going over and checking out his videos, as they are really amazing and cover a lot of the lore and details about each of the different Space Marine Legions. I do highly recommend trying something like this, as it really pushes you outside of your comfort zone and gets you to try techniques and colours that you otherwise might not use. I've also got a bunch of cool marines that I can use for display purposes or for cool narrative gaming purposes. I mean, who can imagine a sort of A-team formed of all of these different legionaries put together? That'd be really cool. Avengers Assemble, yeah, exactly. Like Grimdark Avengers. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby. And I'll see you next time.